Hi, I'm Mark Summerfield. I'm author of Programming in Go, uh, a new book about the Go programming language from Google. Uh, uh, and this is a tip is about concurrency. Go supports concurrency at three levels. Firstly, very low level atomic operations. These are the kind of operations that library implementers use to create lock-free data structures. And the Go documentation and the Go experts do not recommend this for application programmers because it's very difficult to get right and very easy to, to mess up. Uh, and I don't cover it because it's just too low-level and specialized. The next level are just low-level things, um, condition variables and mutexes. I do cover that to some extent, but they're discouraged in Go because they're too low level. Now, in other languages, C++ and Java, typically, that's pretty high level. Uh, but for Go, that's a low level approach. The high level approach that Go uses is to use a model of concurrent sequential processes um, using two things, Go routines and channels. Uh, a Go routine is like a very lightweight thread, but unlike threads where creating tens or hundreds could demolish a machine, uh, with Go routines, you can create hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and the machine will cope fine with that because they're very lightweight. So Go routines are, you can think of as, as very lightweight threads, so they're independent units of execution, and you can communicate with these. Um, you can communicate with them using shared data just as you would with normal threads, but the go way is to use channels. And these, if, if you're familiar with Unix pipes, work rather like Unix pipes, but with some crucial differences. Firstly, they're type safe uh, and they're bidirectional, although you can specify them to be unidirectional in either direction that you prefer. Now, obviously, the book gives a lot of examples of using these. And, and one example in the book that I, I particularly liked was doing an Apache web server analysis where I had a program that would read in one of these web server access log files, which the, the one I used was over 500 megabytes, but they, they easily reach gigabytes, these files. And I used a variety of approaches that I show in the book to uh, doing concurrent access. So basically, I wanted to find out the, the top 20 pages that were accessed. So I had to read every line in this file. And of course, doing that single threaded uh, would have taken a long time. So I spread the load over various Go routines uh, using different techniques. And the book shows comparisons between the conventional mutex-based way and the concurrent sequential processing way using Go's uh, Go routines and channels. Uh, in, incidentally, after I'd finished the book, I came up with another idea for doing the same thing because, of course, the file doesn't change when you're reading it. So I actually opened the file once per Go routine and just used uh, seek to go to a different chunk of the file and read uh, independent chunks. And that improved speed considerably. So there's lots of ways that you can get Im improved performance using uh, Go's concurrency support. And it's amazing, actually, when you start um, thinking about concurrency in Go, because whereas in other languages you're always worrying about locks and, and, and access to your data structures, if you use a very very clean approach that Go offers using Go routines and, and uh, channels, it, it gives you a freedom that you didn't have before to do things in a very clean and maintainable way. Um, so I'd, I'd certainly look at uh, Go for on that basis alone. The, because it just gives you a model of programming that is just so much easier for concurrent programming that, than other languages are offering at the moment. And that's really what I wanted to say with the, the tips. In, in terms of Go generally, it's a small language. It's small enough for any average programmer to become a master of the language. Now, I doubt there are many people who could become masters of C++11 because the language is enormous and it's very subtle and there are very um, loads and loads of corner cases. Now, Go is much simpler and clearer, and much easier to learn uh, and to become an expert in. The other nice thing about Go is that Go programs build incredibly quickly. Uh, the Go standard libraries Go, uh, the part of it that's implemented in Go, which seems to be most of it, is uh, a third of a million lines and the whole lot built in a couple of minutes. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to build that, that, that uh, volume of software you in C and C++ in that kind of time. So Go is really worth learning. And I think it's worth learning, and obviously through my book programming in Go is the, 
the best way to learn it. But the reasons to learn it are you might find it useful and it, it adds to your tool chest. You can do go th things with the Go language that are easier and better than perhaps with other languages. But the other reason for learning Go is simply to broaden your programming horizons and, and, and look at a different way of programming, a different approach uh, to object orientation, a different approach to error handling, and of course, a different approach to concurrency. So it will broaden your, your thinking about programming and deepen your expertise as a programmer. Uh, and of course, Add, add, give you a new language to add to your tool chest uh, that you can use when the circumstances are right for it. So thank you for listening to the tips. I hope you do buy the book. The first chapter and the examples are all freely downloadable, so you can try before you buy, um, and I hope you have fun with it. Thank you very much.